Until 2002, we didn't know what was at the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way. We knew we were rotating around something, but it took us until the 21st century to figure out it was a supermassive black hole, with a mass 4 million times bigger than our Sun, located in a region of the Milky Way called Sagittarius A star. The discovery took place after we came up with the infrared smoke alarm. So you're driving down the highway, and an 18-wheel tractor-trailer is coming up fast behind. You've got to change lanes. You look in the mirror. Is there enough space? And you notice the words on the mirror. Objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. No kidding! Well, it's the same with the Milky Way galaxy. There's another galaxy headed this way, and like the tractor-trailer, it's closer than it looks. The Andromeda Galaxy, or M31, as it was labeled originally by Charles Messier in his catalog of 110 fuzzy objects in 1774, is now officially named NGC-122, that's New Galactic Catalog 122. A spiral galaxy larger than the Milky Way, the Andromeda Galaxy is so big and so close that you can see it without a telescope. In fact, it appears with the unaided eye half as wide as the Moon. It's estimated that the Andromeda Galaxy contains 1 trillion stars, compared with the Milky Way's estimated 300 to 400 billion measly stars. To see the Andromeda Galaxy, you must allow your eyes to become dark adapted. This might take about 10 minutes while your pupils dilate to take in as much light as possible. M31 is best seen from late summer through winter when the great square of Pegasus the Winged Horse is overhead. Draw a line across the great square diagonally upwards from the lower corner star, then go a little further beyond the square. There it is! But you still won't be able to see how big it is, unless you peek at it from the corners of your eyes. If you stare straight at it, the galaxy will tend to fade away. You must use your peripheral vision to see how big the Andromeda galaxy appears. Peripheral vision, or averted vision, allows you to see light more sensitively at night, but without color. Sailors have used averted vision for centuries to see faint lights out on the ocean or on land. Aristotle used averted vision to observe star cluster M41 in Canis Major, as he described in his book Meteorologica. In a telescopic photograph, the Andromeda galaxy appears six times wider than the Moon, because with the unaided eye, we can only see the bright center of the galaxy. A telescopic photograph shows how massive m 31 spiral arms really are. And this beast of a galaxy is headed our way. We are looking at a future massive collision of galaxies of, well, galactic proportions. When that happens, humanity may need to relocate to another galaxy to inhabit. Perhaps we'll go to the pinwheel galaxy in the asterism of the Big Dipper. How do we know the Andromeda galaxy is moving towards us? With a tool called a spectroscope. After the camera, the spectroscope is the most important attachment to a telescope. Oh, except for the human eye. Our eyes only see light. You don't have this big horse in your eye. You only have the light being reflected by the horse in your eyes. The same with space. We only see the light coming from there. So, if we are going to understand space, we need to understand light. And that was not an easy task for astronomers of the 19th century. The invention of the spectroscope was a big breakthrough in understanding light coming to Earth from space. With a spectroscope, astronomers can tell which direction objects in space are moving, as well as which elements are making the light. When you hear an ambulance approaching, you hear the siren getting louder and higher. And when it passes you and goes away, you hear the siren's sound get weaker and lower. The change in pitch frequency depends entirely on the motion of the source. This is called the Doppler effect, after the Austrian physicist and mathematician Christian Johann Doppler, who first explained the effect in 1842. The ambulance siren is not changing its volume. The sound waves are being compressed as it is approaching and stretched as the ambulance recedes. The spectroscope shows that light waves show the same Doppler effect as sound waves. They are compressed as the star or galaxy is approaching us and appear stretched when it is receding. Therefore, the light from an approaching galaxy will appear slightly bluer, the blue shift, a slight increase in frequency, and the light from a receding galaxy will appear slightly redder than normal, or red shift, a slight decrease in the light's frequency. In 1929, Edwin Hubble, 
after whom the Hubble spacecraft is named, published his spectroscopic study of 46 galaxies, the light from all but one of which was redshifted, moving away. Hubble's study provided the first evidence that the universe was expanding. The farther away a galaxy was from the Milky Way, the faster it was moving away. This was also the first evidence that the universe began with a Big Bang. The one galaxy whose light was blue-shifted, moving towards the Milky Way, was M31, the Andromeda galaxy, the closest galaxy. 250,000 miles per hour seems a pretty high speed at which to have a collision. That's the speed spectroscopic measurements of the blue shift of Andromeda indicate. It's going to be a big mess when it happens. But when is it going to happen? To determine when the two galaxies will collide, we need to determine the distance between them. And for that, we need, boom, supernovas. Type 1a supernovas are what are called standard candles. Just as we know how bright a candle shines, we know how bright a Type 1a supernova shines, its absolute magnitude. A Type 1a supernova appears when a white dwarf collapses under the pressure of all the gas it has been gravitationally slurping from a companion star. Looking at the Andromeda galaxy and measuring the apparent brightness of a supernova in the galaxy, it is possible to calculate its distance away from us. Because the intensity of light dims inversely with the square of its distance away, which is called the inverse square law, by comparing the apparent brightness of a supernova in the Andromeda galaxy with its absolute brightness, well, we get an approximate distance of 2.5 million light years. Since one light year is approximately 6 trillion miles, and the Andromeda galaxy is 2.5 million light years away, even though it is approaching at the speed of about 250,000 miles, we have about 4 billion years before the big collision. So you can wait until after lunch, maybe dinner, to start packing. As an aside, if we see the Andromeda galaxy as it was 2.5 million years ago, and it has been moving toward the Milky Way all this time, how big in the sky would it appear now? Quite as big as that tractor trailer in your rearview mirror. But do we really have 4 billion years before the galaxies crash? There are several other factors to consider. The minor galaxies that are gravitationally linked to both the Milky Way and the Andromeda galaxy will be swallowed up by their host galaxies. Considering the lopsided mass distribution that will result, the galactic collision of the Milky Way and Andromeda will be affected. Some scientists are saying it won't be a direct hit, but more of a sideswipe. And then there's the galactic halos of each galaxy. Here's what Project Amiga has found out about the halo of stars and gas surrounding the Andromeda galaxy. Using the Hubble Space Telescope, researchers were able to observe how the light from bright distant quasars were being absorbed by the mostly invisible gas around the Andromeda galaxy. Look at the results! Notice M31 in the center. If the same is true of the Milky Way, and there's no reason to think it would be different, then the halos of the two galaxies are touching now. The collision has already begun. There is also a question about what effect the dark matter clouds around each galaxy might have on an impending collision, or are having now. But enough of speculation. In 4 billion years, the Sun will have increased brightness on its way to becoming a red giant star. And humans will have already found another galaxy to inhabit. Happy traveling, dear humans! To see one of the most significant astronomical events of all time, we go to South America. In the Atacama Desert, Chile, we find the most advanced technology for space observation. Here, the Royal Astronomical Community members watch for six months as a black hole simply absorbed a massive star. By the way, these are the same scientists who prove that in the center of our Milky Way galaxy is a supermassive black hole, and even took a photo of it. For the first time in history, this incredible event happened very close to Earth. Well, the distance of 215 million light years is considered quite close in astronomy terms anyway. Light from this event reached our planet in September of 2019, and even the most experienced scientists dropped their jaws in surprise. Imagine a star the size of our Sun, about 860,000 miles wide. Such stars have enough weight to create a strong gravitational field, holding many planets in their orbit. And now, let's place a giant black hole next to it. 
The hole is absolutely black, shaped like a disk, and weighs a billion times more than this star. The force of its gravitational field is incredible. Nothing can leave its gravity force. Objects that can move at the speed of light will still fall into this black abyss. Even light itself cannot escape its boundaries. As soon as a star enters the gravitational field of a black hole, it has no chance. At first, it tries to resist the pull of the black hole. Still, the star's outer layers begin to stretch toward the black hole, just like spaghetti. This is due to a powerful force of attraction. If you had the opportunity to extend your hand toward the black hole, hmm. you would see your fingers begin to stretch and elongate. This is because the force of attraction increases with every inch. Therefore, it acts stronger on your fingers than on your arm. That's why this process of pulling objects into a black hole is called spaghettification. The first thing to be sucked into the black hole is the star's crown. This is the outer shell of the star, which consists of hot plasma. You may notice how the star begins to shrink in size. This is because that plasma makes up most of the visible sun. When this hot plasma spaghetti reaches the black hole, it may appear to remain on the disk's edge and continue to orbit the black hole. But in fact, there is no turning back anymore. The star's particles have already hit the event horizon of the dark abyss. The gravitational field of a black hole bends light around its edges, so the event horizon looks a bit like a croissant for the observer. Boy, lots of food metaphors here. I'm getting hungry. You may also notice a kind of chaos in this ring, as if some light particles are moving in one direction and others in another. This happens because of a mirror effect. But you can be sure that whatever reaches the event horizon will, sooner or later, be pulled into the singularity, or the black pearl of the black hole. Another illusion you spot is the star particles in the event horizon moving slower. The truth is that supermassive objects like a black hole curve space-time around them. And the more massive the object, the slower time flows near it. If you hang one watch beside a black hole and another on a wall in your bedroom, you will see that the second hand in the first watch barely moves, while a whole day passes on Earth. As observers, it seems to us that the particles of light have slowed their movement. But in fact, they may have already been absorbed by the black hole ages ago. Now, massive streams of red-hot plasma splash into space, just like spaghetti sauce. <laughs> when a black hole has absorbed star material, it emits powerful rays of energy at a rate of about 6,200 miles per second. This release of energy is accompanied by an intense flash. It's thanks to this flash that scientists can even detect this process in the first place. This phenomenon can be observed when a supernova explodes. When nothing remains of the star's body, we can still see stardust and other particles in the black hole's event horizon. Kind of like the Parmesan cheese sprinkled on the spaghetti. Hey, stop me if I'm taking this too far. When the process of spaghettification is completed, about half of the star's weight has been thrown into outer space as dust and glowing particles. The other half was entirely absorbed by the black hole. The scientists observed this process for almost six months. But what would be more interesting is to dive into a black hole yourself. Well, we can't do that yet, but we can simulate this process. Here's a little drone, our metal friend, kind of like a meatball. No, I haven't had lunch yet. Right now, it's at a safe distance from the black hole, the length of about three widths of the event horizon. Objects at this distance can orbit the black hole safely. A little closer, and it'll be swallowed up by a dark infinity. So our destroyed star could have safely existed at this distance. Moreover, planets can live at this distance. And if there is a suitable source of light and heat somewhere nearby, life can exist on these planets too. But our goal is the singularity, and we guide the meatball, I mean the drone, closer to the event horizon. After a few minutes, the force of attraction begins to strengthen, and the drone starts to stretch like spaghetti. When it begins spinning around the black disk, it means it has reached the event horizon and has started its descent into the black abyss. 
Now, let's look at everything from the drone's perspective. All the light from the stars that it sees becomes blue. This is called gravitational blue shift. As it falls into the black hole, its gravitational field pulls the photons of light down, giving them energy. Their wavelengths grow shorter, so the red photons change into blue. The drone continues to fall and is already completely hidden from our eyes. And all that the robot sees is a bright, thin blue beam. Now it's in complete darkness. There's absolutely nothing here, not even time. Here, time goes so slowly that our entire solar system could grow old and cease to exist during a minute spent in a black hole. But our drone will live until its battery is empty. Hey, the drone sees a small bundle of light again, and it's getting closer and more prominent. Now the drone will experience the same fall, only in reverse. Once the drone leaves the singularity, the heart of the black hole, it will be on the event horizon once again. The light from the stars gradually changes from blue to red. Then the drone is thrown into outer space, perhaps in some faraway galaxy. Well, returning from a black hole is just a theory. Some people think that black holes are a kind of wormhole that can lead us to distant places in space. But so far, these theories are considered fiction. Black holes are quite challenging to detect. The problem is, they are, well, black, just like space. They don't emit light like stars, so they can only be detected by gravity anomalies. Despite this, scientists believe there are a vast numbers of black holes in our universe. They're born when a massive star collapses under its own weight. And given the infinite number of stars in the universe, black holes are probably a common phenomenon. Scientists believe black holes have their own lifetimes. This is because of Hawking radiation. A black hole loses mass, and so, to continue existing, it has to absorb massive objects, like the star we just watched. But if the black hole lives in deep space, it has less to absorb and will most likely begin to shrink until it just disappears. Like this plate of spaghetti. Mm.